Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you guys how to make a very simplistic wire wrapped ring that you can use with half round wire, round wire, or even square wire. So all the tools and all the tools and materials will be listed down below. So let's get started. So here I have a few different examples of this ring style. This one's probably my favorite. It's very petite, delicate just nice and surprisingly though very stable and secure this is made from an 18 gauge half round um, silver plated para wire and then here are two examples of just um, out of round wire this is a full round 18 gauge and I have a three band and a five band so you can kind of add your own you know, variation to it and then here I have one that actually has some little beads on it um, now just real quick, if you're putting beads on it, the technique that you'll want to use, you can see this side has a much deeper squiggle than what this side does. So to get that bead to stop wiggling around, we're going to have to give it, ouch, um, <laughs> we're going to have to throw our pliers across the room, um, but then give it a much deeper squiggle. And so the motion that we're going to be doing to do that, do do do. Let's get the bead in place. Oh, now you don't want to go over the curve. There we go. And now, just kind of gripping it up like that. And squiggle. And kind of space everything out nice and evenly. And now we have a very cute little squiggle ring with some beads on it. And you could put any old bead that you like on there, really. So to make this ring, whether you're using full round, square, or half round, I'm going to demonstrate with the half round because it can be a little bit more tricky. Um, you'll need about 12 inches of wire. You could give yourself a little bit more. I, I would recommend more if you wanted to do a five layer, but for doing just a three layer rotation at about a size 11, 12 inches is plenty. And just snip. Yeah, the tools that you'll need are a metal ring mandrel, a jeweler's hammer with a nylon and brass head, wire snips, and round nose pliers. Also, it always comes in really handy to have some nylon jaw pliers on hand for straightening out the wire and some pliers to grip it with. So here I have some bent nose. Um, just gonna, with the half round, again, the reason it's kind of tricky is you can see there's some twists and stuff going on here that I don't want happening. So I'm going to grip the wire nice and flat um, and then grip it up close and now with my nylon jaw and I'm just going to pull this through and what this does is it serves to work harden it just a little bit but also get everything nice and straight and you can always tell whenever there's a twist in your half round wire because it flashes so nicely. So now that that's nice and straight and kink free, I'm going to come through and uh, I always start to make the ring about a size or two larger than what I think I'll need it to be because it compresses down whenever you put those, or rather contracts down when you put those squiggles in it. And so I'm just wrapping it around three times, making sure that it's not crossing itself at any point. I'm going to keep these... Uh, wraps very parallel to each other no uh, crossing now here at the end we've come got a couple of inches left of tail wire and on the front side we have three nice wraps and so now making sure that I haven't twisted my wire or anything like that I'm holding it quite securely and I'm going to pin it with my finger against the mandrel and grab the tail wire here and just bend at a 90 degree. Pinning it keeps your wire from twisting. And again, if you're using round wire, this matters significantly less, but with the half round, it makes a huge difference. So now I'm gonna just turn the other way and grab that wire, place my finger, and twist. And so now we have this bend going on. So I'm going to remove the mandrel and you can kind of see, and really that makes like a cool little you know, just design. And so now 
bringing these wires close to each other, but again, trying to not overlap them too much. I am going to bend this end through, around and through, and I'm just going to do a single rotation around the ring band. It's going to be very quick to want to compress, so we can actually come in with our nylon draw pliers and squish, flatten that out just a bit. You can see that keeps them kind of snug against each other. And then I actually train it just a little bit, running my finger along it to give it a little bit of a curve, give the wire a curve, bend it around and bring it through. And then to get a nice tight bend up against, snug against the wires, I like to pin it with my fingernail and bend. I feel like that helps me get it to happen where I want it to happen. And again, I'm going to come in here and just smoosh. And there we have a really nice design. And honestly, you could just leave it like this. Just a very simple, some folks really like the way that something like that looks. Very simplistic. Um, you could also take it from here and hammer it with the brass end of your hammer and get a really nice hammered metal look. But what I'm going to do is put this on our ring mandrel. Not too snug. You want a little bit of room because these squiggles contract, like they kind of shorten the ring size, diminish it. So I'm just splaying it out a little bit with my fingers. And you want to be really careful to not let your pliers slip because if your pliers slip, it's going to give you a little bite in your wire. You see right there where it has a bit the enamel? If I were using a precious metal, I could file that down and buff it out, but this is coated copper, so um, that's kind of a pain in the butt. But, you know, it happens. That's why I always recommend practicing on coated wire too, though. And so I'm just, again, holding it quite secure. I'm going to come in on the bottom layer, and by bottom I mean closest to my work surface, with uh, the nose in this position and you know mix it up however you feel but for the first time might be might be a good idea to just follow along exactly as I do and then branch out from there just so we can try to get similar results but uh the nose of the pliers that's closest to me is below the wire the nose of the plier that's farthest away is above the wire and I'm bringing you could have it be very wide but I keep it pretty narrow and I'm pressing the tips of my pliers very firmly into the ring mandrel so as to not let it slip and just turning like that and now I'm going to go in same plier positioning next wire up in a little bit like right in this cavernous area that it opened up this void placing my pliers trying really hard to not let it slip just like that and then again putting it right into that area Place in my pliers, keeping the tips equidistant from each other, like uh, same distance apart. And you could have it be really wide on the first one, medium on the second, and then small on the first. To add some variation, but to get this effect, I keep it the same distance apart each time. And so there's that. And it's not perfectly centered. I wanted it a little bit off to the side, but you could do it perfectly centered. You could come through and do it again on each tier and that'll give yourself some cute little waves. So there's that. And now I'm going to go ahead and hammer this. First with a nylon side just to harden it up. And now I'm going to go through with the brass side. Uh, so sorry it's going to be kind of loud but this is going to give it a really nice texture. This is also why I choose to use a metal mandrel as opposed to a plastic one, is it lets me do this kind of shaping. So now you can see, instead of it being very shiny, it actually has a really nice little hammered texture to it, and it makes it to where it's not just going to warp out of shape. So now I'm going to come around to the back side and do one more complete rotation around each side, bringing it in, folding it. 
using my nylon jaw to smush that down very snug and I'm going to bring it in one last time and I'm going to snip just flush up right to the edge of the wire that's I really like using flush cutters because they have that perfectly flat side so it lets you get right up against what you're doing and then I'm going to do that same thing on the other side And it has such a tendency to want to be rounded. So coming in with my nylon jaw pliers, 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 <laughs> um, it helps keep it flat. And now I'm going to do the finisher. And use my flush cutters to just slip. Now you could also come in with your pliers and tighten this up just a little bit. And you can see they started to overlap each other just a little. So I'm going to put this back onto my mandrel, try to straighten everything back out. And now I'm going to hammer this side. Again, first with the nylon. And now with the uh, brass end. Now you'll see we get a lot of spread. Oops, didn't mean to go off camera. We get a lot of spreading whenever we hit it with the hammer, the brass side, but you'll also notice I can't unspread it. It's there. So, something to keep in mind. I don't want to hit too much where the wires are overlapping on each other because it, um, with this half round wire being thinner, uh, we'd have more likelihood of it breaking. But um, I just want to do it enough that it's nice and secure. So now we're going to pull that off nice round shape and just slide it onto our finger and there we are this is one that's a little less adjustable um, than some of my other ring designs you could go in with your pliers and deepen that curve but typically whenever I make it a size it's kind of that size also just for troubleshooting purposes if you have any like rough little tip tips and stuff here on the inside of the ring, you can come through and just using your pliers, kind of pinch that together and round it around. Um, again, uh, if this were a precious metal, you could file it and get it to be completely smooth, but I don't want to mar up the enamel too much on this plated wire, so I'm just going to curve it over with... Um, with my plier tip, and honestly, that should be pretty good. Run your finger over it, make sure that there's no pokey bits, till it's nice and comfy. And there you are, your ring's all done. Hey y'all, thanks so much for hanging out with me for this tutorial. I do hope it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. Um, if you would like to share pictures of what you have made from just any of my tutorials or something that you came up with completely on your own or anything like that, you can share them to my Facebook wall um, or you can tag me on Instagram. There'll be links for both of those down below. And then also if you enjoy my free tutorials and you want to support the creation of more of them, um, you know, keep that daily production coming. And then also participate in my weekly fairy house giveaways as well as my monthly craft crates and digital download content, um, please consider checking me out on Patreon. Pledges start at just a dollar a month and the more you pledge the more you get but also I post exclusive things to Patreon that are available for everyone to see they just don't get posted to any of my other social media either because I really like the way that Patreon's put together I'm a lot more likely to get like their message system is amazing like I get a notification every time somebody sends me a message and I'm able to just like click on it and reply right then and there and it's like it's so nice to be able to like track everything um, that way. That way it can be a little bit more reliable about getting back to y'all. So YouTube and Patreon are probably the two best places to contact me. 
um, if you have a question and you really need a reply because I don't use Facebook Messenger anymore unless it's my business page and Instagram I don't always like if you and I aren't friends on Instagram I don't always get the message right away like um I have to like hunt it down kind of and I don't always remember how to do that so sorry I'm not that good at using the internet guys I'm just I'd rather be crafting than being like how do I do messages now Facebook um so that's neither here nor there but thank you guys again so much for hanging out with me so I will see y'all hopefully in my next video and until then happy crafting bye <laughs>